Hey guys, Miles here, Point Control. Uh, I just want to show you the progress on the graphic user interface. Uh, like everything I do, it takes longer than I thought. Uh, but this is an attempt to make things a little bit easier to set up. I know there's been some challenges when you first get your point control. Once you do it a few times, it's pretty straightforward, but we're just going to try to simplify it with this graphic user interface. So basically, uh, we only have a few things to enter. These uh, select hardware specifications, as well as select personal settings. Um, just pull a few things from those drop-down menus and you should be ready to go. Uh, you can still refine it though, um, but this will get you much closer than the original factory settings, especially because everybody's uh, monitors are different. All right, so starting with the um, uh, horizontal resolution, we'll go ahead and do mine here, 2560 by 1440. Screen mode, this is a uh, little bit of point of contention with some folks. They had uh, some issues with it and you pretty much pick whichever one you're doing. DCS windowed and it shows you a graphic representation down here. It shows your desktop and the windowed mode. Um, a lot of people still like to use this because they like to have different things along the sides whether it's your uh, voice attack or whatever. Um, you do not have to worry about clicking outside the box with point control because it will limit the cursor. Um, so that, that's a good thing. Some people claim they get a better frame rate with the full screen mode. Go to your stretched mode and that's what it looks like. Now it also, this is with point control, this is your zero or zero, and not just with point control, but with your mouse. So your actually underlying coordinates will be in this area here. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that. And then if you're using, I know Chick, I'm, I didn't forget about you, Chick. I'm still uh, working on the um, the mode to use for your uh, for your big 65-inch screen. All right, so we'll just go with uh, windowed mode. That's what I usually use. Um, you, all you have to do is pick your headset model here, do the Rift S, and then it's going to fill in all of our limits and targets and all that information based upon um, your headset and Google monitor resolution. You can see this changes based upon, you know, if I change my resolution, you can see these numbers change. That's because um, the VR units, they use the vertical, ver uh, they essentially expand the, or shrink the um, horizontal image to your monitor and then we have to deal, it, but keeps the aspect ratio, so that's why our limits change based upon our um, our uh, vertical and horizontal resolution. Changes the aspect ratios. All right, so basically um, over here, you don't have to worry about any of this. Anything that's grayed out, you don't have to put anything in. That's just for all the calculations. Um, then we go over to the set personal settings and we could do your FCU mapping. I'm gonna change this so you could just left click or right click on whichever ones you want. But right now there's four options. You can see the, uh, the buttons changing here. There's your the original setup, you could do your, uh, you could fl flip them around, do your left and right click for option two, option, oh, that's option four, let's do option three. Uh, you can see where uh, it actually reverses them completely for those of you with, it, with short thumbs, <coughs> fire cat. And option four, what this is, this is going to allow you to uh, doing a custom map key as part of the uh, the new software I'm working on because it's actually kind of easy to press both of these at once with the second one you press being the direction of the um, the mouse wheel so that's something new I'll talk about that again at a later date we'll just go back to the standard mouse okay now this part this part is kind of critical uh, this is the FCU normal operating distance this is what we talked about in the video where it's actually how feel how far you feel the panel is in front of you which is how far you're going to be operating your hand. So, you know, if you feel that your vertical panel is 18 inches, you hold your hand 18 inches in front of you, you know, when you're uh, when you're using it, you just put in 18 inches there, and that's going to help adjust your, your settings also. Um, that's going to help get your uh, factory calibration very close now. All right, so moving over. Um, actually, I don't have that factory in here. That's why it didn't change. Um, you'll also notice as I move over here, it tells you what each block does. This is enter hardware specifications. Down here, it tells you last thing you were in. This is the personal settings. It tells you a little bit about personal settings. Um, all right, so let's go back over to filters here. Uh, the filters, I don't need any. Uh, this is for the original Vive, light ha original Vive uh, Lighthouse as well as the base station. Just pick whichever one you have. Um, best performance is none. HMS sensitivity. Uh, I had some pretty good results with increasing the sensitivity, which is to the right, um, for uh, better cursor resolution. Essentially, it makes uh, it registers a larger blob, essentially, that we're tracking. Um, so that's a kind of a plus. Uh, the APV, APV banks, I'm just getting going on those now. 
Um, I hope I've been trying to get some prototypes out to a couple, a couple of guys. Uh, these are essentially switches that mount on your head strap of your, uh, or the face of your um, VR headset and allow, let you, you know, essentially adjust your nods and things like that by pressing go buttons. Uh, the VRBs, those aren't active yet. Those are the buttons that will be just off screen by moving your cursor off screen. So you go to the, uh, if you're flying a Huey and you want to bring up your control panel, if my cursor's down here on the right, you do, you just uh, point off screen slightly where that would normally be your weapons control panel and uh, click and your panel would come up. If you want to turn off all the chat window, you would just point to where the chat window is just off screen, click it and the chat window would go up. So you're actually going to have like 48 different options of buttons going around the screen uh, because of your three, one, two, three buttons. And I think it's uh, 16 essentially hot zones around the screen. All right, uh, moving on, FCU zoom. I don't particularly like this, the proximity zoom. Some people do, um, but it's going to be there if you want it. If you enable proximity zoom, basically what that is is if you uh, bring your cursor, your FCU close to your headset, it'll automatically zoom in, and then it'll zoom out when you take it away. And that's what these adjustments are. So this one would be, you can see it says zoom in. If you want to zoom in pretty close, you'd bring it close, you'd bring your FCU all the way in, boom, it would zoom in. Now, it's not going to zoom back out until you cross the threshold of the zoom out one. So if we put this all the way back here, um, we can zoom in and then extend our hand to a comfortable distance and use it. And then when we wanted to uh, not turn the zoom off, we pretty much just take the FCU out of view or turn it sideways and it'll zoom out. If you want to have your hand, let's say, almost extended, you could bring it in further, so you bring the FCU in. It won't zoom in, won't zoom in, won't zoom in. Bam, that's where it zooms in. You, know, you, you have this kind of a dead zone area where it'll stay zoomed in. Once you cross that threshold for the zoom out, it'll zoom out, and you're uh, and you're in business. And okay, so moving on. The uh, these are the menu you can select here, as well as you can move through this menu with your um, with your FCU, and it gives you a little description of each one. Uh, center target. Uh, doing things a little bit differently now, you'll have the option just to go in and align the FCU just by pressing on one target in the center. And uh, that's pretty much shows right here, shows the one target. You can do your left, right, top, bottom calibration if you want to. You can do that separately. That's where you point at each of those targets or use the alternate method, method that I showed in the video. Uh, Fine-tune calibration, that's where you're actually pointing at uh, the three. That's also called edge calibration. So anyway, so these are all the different uh, all the different things we have going on here. Uh, it's starting to look complicated. I hope it's making it easier. I think it is. Uh, the good thing is you really only have to worry about these two blocks and these two blocks, and you have to do a center target calibration. They don't have to, but it would make things a lot. It will definitely bring things closer. So those four items, and you should be up and running. Uh, and then when you want to, you can go ahead and, and fine-tune it the uh, traditional way. All right, so that's it. Any uh, questions or advice or uh, uh, suggestions, go ahead and let me know. Um, and thanks, thank you very much. And I'm starting production again. My boards finally came in, so hopefully I can get those next 150 out pretty quick. Thanks.